gratitude affects the brain as a whole. When we are expressing these neurotransmitters, it's changing our brain chemistry, but also the neural network, the connections, the wiring and firing of the parts of our brain that are in the bliss centers, right? So we start feeling better overall. Are you grateful? Are you practicing gratitude? Because gratitude just doesn't make you feel good. It changes your physiology for the better. It affects your brain and your brain chemicals to make you feel better and healthier overall. Now I'm gonna share with you. A lot of us have been hearing about gratitude. A lot of personal coaches out there, thought leaders, especially the big ones are saying, you gotta be grateful, right? Which is really cool because I want to be grateful, but what does it mean? Now, the dictionary is going to define it as a quality of being thankful and a readiness to show appreciation for and to return to kindness, right? Great, it's a great quality. I would go further to say that it's more than a quality. It's actually a state. Gratitude is a state. Now, I want us to all think about this scenario. You get in your car, and you drive away from meeting a friend for lunch at the restaurant, right? And you're like, I had the best lunch. I'm so happy to reconnect with him or her. And what a great afternoon. Then you drive and you stop for gas and you go to reach for your wallet and it's not there. And you're like, one, damn, I really needed gas. But two, where's my wallet? So you look in your car, you look under the seats, you look in the glove compartment, you look in the center console, you look in the back, you can't find your wallet. Then you remember, hey, I might have probably left it at the table. So you go back to the restaurant and you can't find it at the table. You ask the waiter, you ask the host, you ask the manager, nowhere, nowhere to be found, nowhere at the lost and found. And you go back and it's not there for sure. So you concluded that it must have fell out of your pocket in the street. Okay, so you're half worried and half angry at yourself, but it's manifesting as anxiety in the body, the state of anxiety. And now you're thinking about calling all the companies that you have to do, right? The worst feeling of knowing you have to go back to the DMV, which nobody wants to do. And you think about all the trouble you have to go to just to get back to the state that you were in when you had your wallet. Then you go back to your car and you feel mostly defeated in your efforts and you're ready to take the next steps because it's what has to be done. But I want you to imagine how you would feel if you return home and someone's pulling in at the same time and then comes out with your wallet. And they say, hey, I'm sorry just to come straight here in person, I know, and I apologize if I startled you, but I found your wallet and I came to drop it off on the address in your license and I'm so happy you're here. The moment you realize what's happening and unfolding in front of you, that simultaneous feeling of thankfulness and relief, the connection you feel to that human and humanity as a whole, that's gratitude. It's a state, not a quality. So I would actually disagree with the dictionary. It's a general state of thankfulness, of appreciation. You kind of want to hug that person. Oftentimes we do hug that person. That's gratitude. Now I ask you, are you experiencing this step within yourself daily? Now Joe Dispenza, huge on gratitude. He's a leading mind-body neuroscientist and he says this quote, gratitude becomes the emotional signature that it's already happened. Gratitude is the ultimate state of receiving. Now in a 2010 peer-reviewed study in the Journal of Psychology, we learn about what some of the scientific evidence behind gratitude is. Now one study, participants were divided into three groups. One group, they were asked to journal about the negative events or hassles in their life, the second group about the things for which they were grateful for, and the third group about neutral life events. And they were required to journal either daily or weekly. Now across the various study conditions, the gratitude subsample consistently evidenced higher well-being in comparison with the other two study groups. What about in our youth? 221 adolescents were assigned to either a gratitude exercise, for example, counting one's blessings, hassle conditions, what are the things that are bothering you, or a controlled condition. As predicted, the gratitude condition was associated with greater life satisfaction. The authors concluded from their experience that counting blessings seemed to be an effective intervention for enhancing well-being in adolescence. So what a gift if we can teach our children how to document their gratitude, how to speak their gratitude, how it will add more confidence into every single day. Really important tool early on. How about in adults like us, right? In a sample of 389 adults, the study by Wood examined gratitude and well-being in the context of personality style. In this study, gratitude was most strongly correlated with personality attributes related to well-being, and the researchers concluded that gratitude has a unique relationship with life 
satisfaction. So many of us are not satisfied with our life, with, the, with our work conditions, with our partner, with our community, with regrets we have from the past, with anxieties we have over the future. How amazing is it to know that something like gratitude can bring us back to the present moment where we feel good in our body with what we're doing. Now, those are just the psychological effects, right? Learning about the positive emotions, the thoughts, bringing more awareness to them, increasing our overall self-satisfaction, enhancing our overall mood. But there's also physical and social benefits to gratitude. Let's go into those. Dr. Guy Winch, the author of the Emotional First Aid book, uh, he says, when we express gratitude, our brain releases dopamine and serotonin. Those are the two hormones that make us feel light and happy on the inside. Dopamine is responsible for allowing you to feel pleasure. Satisfaction, motivation. Serotonin is the neurotransmitter responsible for mood, digestion, sleep. It's the mood stabilizer happy chemical. It is the chemical that is targeted by antidepressants, so we feel better and happier. Now, isn't it amazing to think that just bringing and expressing gratitude boosts up our natural flow of dopamine and serotonin. It's not only at the neurotransmitter level. Gratitude affects the brain as a whole. When we are expressing these neurotransmitters, it's changing our brain chemistry, but also the neural network, the connections, the wiring and firing of the parts of our brain that are in the bliss centers, right? So we start feeling better overall. It's reducing our fear and anxiety by regulating those hormones that are affecting our brain, that are recycling and reinforcing a fear state and an anxious state. It's enhancing, as I mentioned, it's dopamine and serotonin over and over. And also, it's fostering cognitive restructuring by evoking positive thinking and positive thinking changing the brain and over and over. So it's a cycle that once you're in that gratitude state, your brain is accommodating through rewiring and those bliss, pleasure, and positive centers of your brain are growing, whereas the fear and anxious parts of your brain are reducing. It's very much so like meditation. The brain is malleable. It's plastic and it can change. So this is incredible that just a state that you can bring yourself to be in can have so many positive effects on our health. And the last part is the social psychology. So it's not only us that are affected, it's the way we perceive the world around us, right? By expressing feelings of gratitude, we increase our social support and likability, right? Everyone wants to be around someone that's grateful, right? Because they're mirroring a part of us which is not coming out, the part of us that needs to be expressed, the part of us that really wants to be connected with people. So. When you are in a grateful state, your social support increases, your likability increases, that's for sure, that always happens. And that's going to improve group dynamics, improve community acceptance, and now you're activating a very ancient part of you, the part that needs to be tribal, the part that needs to be in community. So a lot of people ask, Dr. G, how do I bring more community? You can really start with bringing gratitude, right? You open yourself to more people, to more likability, to more growth, better group dynamics, and what does it do overall? Create stronger interpersonal connections. One of the leading, one of the number one determinants of human health is how strong our interpersonal connections are. The weaker the interpersonal connections, the weaker our overall health, and the shorter our lifespan. So again, going back to this, can you bring and foster and nurture and cultivate those parts of you that feel gratitude every single day. So I wanna share with you one of the things that I do to bring gratitude, one of the things that I have recommended to people over time, one of the first steps is bring awareness to you. Stop everything, stop the looking back in the past, projecting to the future, bring awareness to this present moment, right? The, the really reality of who you are is in this present moment. And bring awareness to you and see if you have the propensity to look outside of you, do you focus on the things that you don't have? Whether it's material things or it's even qualities that you feel that you don't have within you, which is actually an illusion, but is it qualities that you don't think, intangibles that you don't think you have within you? And how about for once? You switch around that light that is coming out of you, looking outside of you, switching that spotlight onto you that beautiful spotlight onto you and seeing you for you. Once you illuminate that part of you, you illuminate the blessings that you have created already. You start looking at the life that you've built and have. And whatever scale, forget about relativity to others, in your own scale of what you are and what you've created, and it's a beautiful thing because then you start appreciating the pillow in your bedroom, the rug that you bought, 
the beautiful stainless steel forks and knives that you have, right? And how about you overall, the intangibles that make you you, that make you magnificent and radiant and attractive and your highest self? What if you brought awareness to what you bring into the world? Because it's pretty incredible when we begin to appreciate ourselves because that is when our physiology starts shifting permanently. Because like I mentioned above, it has physical, it has mental, emotional, and social effects when you're bringing that awareness and spotlight to you. So do this, take a few moments in your day. You only need five minutes, maybe even less, to practice not only thinking about these things, but feeling them, right? Can you even put your hand in your heart and go, I'm blessed, I've created so much beauty in my life, even when on paper, what you've created doesn't look beautiful in your relative speaking or relative terms of comparing to others, just see it for what it is, what you have created. That's going to start reinforcing and cultivating that feeling of gratitude, and it's going to start having positive effects on your brain, positive effects on your overall health, positive effects on how you create and establish community and how you walk around the world. Feel that you not only deserve to be here, but you deserve to share all parts of you with the world unapologetically. The world needs you to be you. And what an opportunity to be grateful when you think of how important your place and existence is to the world and to humanity. Where you are is exactly where you are. It's exactly where you need to be. And it can change. Like life, it can expand and it can contract through time, but you always have control about the food thoughts that you're feeding your brain, and thus your whole physiology. That's a power you have. Remember, your brain and your thoughts are intimately tied to your health, and you can always bring your place and your state back into gratitude. Now, I'll leave you off with Dr. Winch's questionnaire for gratitude. Ask yourself these questions. What have I gotten to learn recently, and has it helped me grow? What opportunities do I currently have that I am grateful for? What physical abilities do I have that I've taken for granted? What did I see today and over the last month that was beautiful? Who at work am I happy to see each day and why? Who is a person that I don't speak to often, but if I lost them tomorrow, it would be devastating? What am I better at today than I was a year ago? What material objects do I use every day that I'm thankful for having? What has someone done for me recently that I'm grateful for? And what are three things that I'm grateful for right now? Ask yourself those 10 questions and you'll soon find not only your physical health changes, your mental and emotional health changes, the way you relate to the world changes. Gratitude, like Dispenza said, will completely change your human experience and openness to receiving more and more. The very thing that you're looking for has been waiting for you. It's not evading you. The only thing that is blocking you is not being grateful for what is here right now. 